Hi, Dr. Pelto here. Um, I want to talk a little bit about pes cavus or something called a high arched foot. How do you know if you have this? Well, I'm going to go over how you might know if you have this and what are the most common problems. Now, no one ever complains about a high arched foot. That's not why they see me, but they see me for a lot of other things. And those are things, things we're going to go and talk over today. Okay, let's get into it here. Uh, first of all, how long you have the symptoms? What are the symptoms? Well, the most, most common symptoms are like ankle sprains, lateral ankle sprains on the outside of the ankle. Um, tendinitis on the outside of the ankle uh, called peroneal tendinitis and um, like foot, foot issues, kind of like uh, stress fractures, things like that. They can really be common. And also some people just have simple things like calluses and, and from the pain, because it basically your foot's like a tripod. And so it, when it's, when it's the, the ball of the foot and the heel, it has a lot of calluses. And so we'll talk about the trim, trim, uh, treatments here. Uh, how does this impact your life? Sometimes people with a high arch foot have a hard time finding shoes. And why do you want treatment? So these are the things I talk to my patients about. But basically, let's talk about a high arched foot. So when I look for someone from the back, you can see here that it, the, the heel is nice and straight. If not, actually it got it kind of canted inward a little bit. Uh, whereas a flat foot is totally the opposite, goes out. Another cool thing is called the peekaboo heel sign. If you've never heard of that, when you look at someone walk towards you with a really high arched foot, you can see the heel on the inside. So from the inside, you can see it. So that's a sign of a high arched foot. Okay. The diagnostic exam that I usually do is an x-ray and you can see a really, really high arched foot. You don't see any collapse here in the middle of the foot. Um, that was what you see on an x-ray. Now, the reason I have these images here, because a lot of times the tendon, specifically the peroneal tendon, which is the tendon on the outside of the ankle can get injured and can kind of get inflamed if you chronically have this. Um, how long does it take to get better? Well, if it's a structural issue, it probably never is going to get better, but I'm talking more of if you have symptoms from it, such as the tendonitis or stress fractures and things like that. So let's, let's get into it. The best uh, test to do is basically you take a block or a book and you stand on it and you let your big toe drop down. Now, if your heel aligns, gets straight, then that type of a, a high arch foot is flexible, okay? So it's a four foot driven varus if it, if it straightens out, okay? And that can be kind of uh, dealt with uh, more so with an orthotic. If it doesn't straighten out, that would mean it's more of a hind foot. So it's kind of a harder thing to, uh, to fix with an orthotic or an AFO. I'm gonna talk about the more simple ones and not go into the surgical options as much. Uh, I talked a little bit before about the calluses. These can be problematic for people. Um, they tend to have a callus pattern like on the too big, like the two, the tripod foot, right? These two bumps right here and then the heel or even on the outside as well. And because of the abnormal pressure, this is a normal pressure pattern, callus pattern. But a lot of these patients have calluses to the front and then the side and then the heel, okay? Uh, these may or may not be uh, problematic. A lot of times they can cause stress fractures though. That's another thing. So let's look at all the problems that high arches can cause. Uh, it can cause pain to the front of the foot. So overloading to the front, that could be metatarsalgia, stress fracture, things like that. Could cause hammer toes or the toes that kind of uh, scrunch up. And that's because of extensor substitution. So if you have a really high arched foot, you have to use your toes to, to, to get clearance from your foot. Uh, you can also develop heel pain, plantar fasciitis, stress fractures, lateral, that means the outside of the foot, you can overload it, you can get uh, ankle sprains, wounds occasionally. Uh, most common what I see is peroneal tendon injury or pain. Uh, specifically, there might be an extra bone called an os peroneum over there. And then uh, you could have medial ankle pain too due to the load um, when you're overloading on the inside of the foot. So I like to use these treatment evaluators. Um, this really, really helped me in the practice. What, what we look at here is uh, we look at um, what is the most effective treatment and what's least effective. And this really, really helps my patients to kind of understand what they want to do. So let's talk uh, more in terms of ankle sprains and uh, peroneal tendon issues, which are the most common things, okay? Uh, so I found most effective for these is shockwave. Uh, and then if I do an ultrasound and I see an injury, I may do an amnio injection. Then going down from there, occasionally a cortisone or an oral steroid or an anti-inflammatory or icing and these topical things, okay? Um, most beneficial to help relieve the tension and tightness to the outside of the calf region would be physical therapy or home therapy with foam rolling specifically, uh, and then some stretching. And then reducing the stress and strain, most, most appropriate is a custom orthotic. Actually, an AFO is probably most appropriate, but for a lot of people, they're not willing to wear those. 
then appropriate shoes, sandals, and then over the counter things like this. So I put all of this here. And if you want to keep watching, uh, you know, you can, but this isn't uh, going to go over everything uh, and especially the surgical details, but let me, let me go a little bit deeper. Uh, once again, I'm going to put some more uh, information here if you want to learn more afterwards. So the acute phase, I usually put people in a walking boot. That's normally for a stress fracture or a tendonitis or something that's really, really bad. They can do icing. They can do a wrap for the stretching or for the a wrap for the swelling. Um, then you can try to correct things with an orthotic. Uh, an orthotic can help to hold everything in position. You can bring a really tight uh, contouring orthotic is best for this, okay? Um, this is the type of a brace that I use as well. This can be used to reduce and, and reduce the strain on the outside of the foot, and uh, it can help heal this a lot quicker. You can see this is the outside. This is the fifth toe, so the outside, and it gives it more, uh, more protection. This is a shockwave. So when someone's pain level is underneath, uh, under an eight, I'll do shockwave to the peroneals, which would be right around here if they're painful. Um, a lot of times if there is an injury, an actual tear, this is an example of a plantar fascia, but for the peroneals as well, if there's an area, I, I would inject that with an amnio injection that can help it. Um, some other things you can help would be icing, uh, doing some foam rolling for any tight areas or physical therapy for those tight areas. These are some examples of some of the tools that I use for that as well. And uh, here are some other ankle braces, walking boots, and taping things. So there are the advanced treatments that you can use. I went over all of these uh, in this handout. And uh, once again, this is my favorite part. This is the foot treatment evaluator. This may help you. I'm going to end with this. Once again, I'm going to put some other videos here you might like that talk about uh, my shoe buying guide some information about uh, shoe buying resources. I, I'll, I'll put also some information here about uh, EPAT and Shockwave and things like that. I have a lot of free books here uh, for you guys if you want to learn more. Once again, I hope you guys found this uh, beneficial and uh, until next time. Okay, thanks guys.